This is lecture outline nine, Roman numeral number one, part two, working on electron configurations. Um, at the end of the last one uh, video, we did the electron configuration of chlorine, uh, what's called the long way without using a noble gas core. Let me do that first, and then we'll do the electron configuration of chlorine using a noble gas core. We have on our periodic table, chlorine is element 17. For a chlorine atom, that means that you're going to have 17 electrons. Starting at the beginning of the periodic table, one in the S area, this is going to be 1S. It has one orbital that holds at most two electrons. Then 2S, 2, 2P6. 3s2, 3p6, ooh, 3p5, because that's as many electrons as it takes to fill up chlorine. And so this is without a noble gas core, no abbreviations. For a noble gas core, you go from chlorine's position on the periodic table backwards to the previous noble gas. That will be 10 electrons. And for those 10 electrons that are equivalent to the same electrons as neon, you put the chemical symbol for neon in square brackets and then write what's left. So, and this is chlorine atom with noble gas core. Now let's do something similar for potassium. Um, and this time we'll do the electron configuration and the orbital energy diagram for the potassium atom. Uh, let's see, potassium is element 19. That's 19 electrons. And uh, we can go ahead and, well, let's do the whole thing. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, ah, 4s1. Or alternatively, with a noble gas core, argon, 4s1. Now the orbital energy diagram for the potassium atom. That's going to have energy and then it's going to have all of the sublevels with each box representing one orbital. like so, and then fill in all the electrons, up arrow, down arrow, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one. That is the orbital energy diagram for potassium from lowest to highest energy. Now we're, gonna, we're being asked to do the electron configuration for the potassium ion. The thing you have to understand about ions is that uh, for forming an ion, it is always the highest energy electron that leaves the atom first. and the highest energy electron 
for electrons always have the highest value of n. So the highest energy electron leaves the atom first. The highest energy electron has the highest value of n. Or, well, electrons have the highest value of n. And where n is the principal energy level, and if we now come back to the potassium atom, as we form the potassium ion, which will be K plus, it lost one electron, it's going to lose the N equals four electron, and with a noble gas core, the K plus ion has the same electron configuration as argon. Now we'll do the same thing for uh, titanium. We will use a noble gas core. We'll start with a titanium atom. Element number 22, Ti. And going backwards on the periodic table to argon, we get to uh, argon for the first 18 electrons. Ding, 4s2, 3d, this is 3d, remember, not 4d, 3d, 2, 1, 2. So that is the ground state electron configuration for the titanium atom. For the titanium 2 ion, we are going to remove two electrons. Those are going to be the highest energy electrons. The highest energy electrons always have highest value of n. So we will remove these two electrons and be left with argon 3d2. First level of understanding, this is always true. It is always the highest value of n. Second level of understanding, the electrons tell you which is the highest energy electron by leaving first. So experimentally, it has been determined that the two highest energy electrons are the 4s electrons, and we're left with 3d. Good. just in case we need more space. Uh, write the ground state electron configuration and the orbital energy diagram for the iron atom, the iron two ion, and the iron three ion. All right, so for the iron atom, that's element number 26. That's 26 electrons. First, 18 electrons of argon, then 4s2, 3d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then for the iron 2 ion, we have 24 electrons. Now, uh, one thing I always like to do is I always like to do the atom first and then take electrons away. If you do the iron two plus ion first, you'll say 24 electrons. Uh, I've seen a number of students do this before where they go according to the shape of the periodic table and they end up with 4s2, 3d4. You won't do that if, <laughs> well, I won't do that anyway. Uh, as long as I do the iron atom first, then I look for the highest energy electrons, uh, highest value of N, take those electrons away first. 3D6. To get iron three plus, take one more electron away. And we're left with 3D5. Now, uh, I'm actually going to uh, zone in 
on the iron three plus ion and do its orbital energy diagram. Iron three plus, well, then we'll even do a simplified version of that because I'm gonna do the uh, noble gas core. Same 18 electrons as argon. That's okay if it says you're allowed to do that on homeworks or exams. Then for Fe3 plus, orbital energy diagram. The next level will be 3D. 3D has five orbitals. It has five electrons. Remember, we put one electron in each one before we pair any, and there are no paired electrons. There are five unpaired electrons. Uh, five unpaired electrons um, is what iron three plus has. Now, oh, this is what I meant to do. If I were to put the 4s, I could put it up here, it would be empty. Uh, and it is higher in energy than 3D. We know that it's higher in energy because the electrons went to 3D first. Yes, there are times when 4S is lower in energy. We just saw the potassium ion. Uh, 4S is lower in energy than 3D. Yes, there are times when 3D is lower in energy than 4S. Uh, what you need to do, uh, two things. One is follow the shape of the periodic table to do your electron configurations for atoms. When you do ions, then take the highest value of n electrons out first, and you will always get the correct electron configuration. Now, there are five exceptions to the shape of the periodic table rule that you have to know. Those are the coinage metals. The coinage metals are going to be Copper, silver, and gold. Right, copper, silver, gold right here. And let's do copper. According to the shape of the periodic table, we'll do a copper atom. Uh, it has 29 electrons. The first 18 of those electrons are the same electrons as argon. Then we come around to 4s2. 3D9. And here's where the exception part comes in. So the 3D9 is almost a full sublevel. 3D10 would be a full sublevel. It turns out that with nine electrons here, one of the electrons moves over, and so this is not the correct answer. The correct answer is 4s1, 3d10. The 3d10 is a complete sublevel. A complete sublevel has slightly lower energy than an incomplete or nearly complete sublevel. That's what drives this change to occur. Um, now, when we do the copper plus ion, the copper one ion, it is this 4s electron that still is the highest energy electron. It leaves, those rules stay the same. The rule that changes is one of these electrons moves over. That's going to happen for silver and gold as well. They will all have completed D sublevels and incomplete S sublevels. That is different than the shape of the periodic table rule, and those are three of the exceptions that you have to know. Two more exceptions to know. Those are going to be chromium and molybdenum. Those are below each other right here on the periodic table. It's a similar idea. This time we'll start by doing the chromium atom. Molybdenum is similar. We have argon, so let's see. 
24 electrons. First 18 electrons of argon, then 4s2. three D four according to the shape of the periodic table. Then we'll note that D has five sublevels, four of which have one electron. It is slightly lower in energy to have a symmetrical state similar to the filled state of copper, silver, and gold, except this time it's half filled. So a half-filled 3D sublevel is slightly lower in energy, is favored. The electrons are telling us which are the lowest energy positions. So the correct answer for chromium is argon 4s1 3D5. Similar for molybdenum, directly below it. Uh, tungsten is, does not follow that rule. Uh, I will tell you this on uh, homeworks and exams. As you get down towards the bottom of the periodic table, there are more and more exceptions to the shape of the periodic table rule. Uh, however, I will only ask you uh, elements that correspond to the shape of the periodic table rule on homeworks and exams. Uh, except for these five exceptions that I'm asking you to memorize as well. Last slide on this video, a very long but otherwise normal example, meaning it does follow the shape of the periodic table. Californium, element number 98, way down here, CF. Uh, let's try that again. CF atom, 98 electrons. We're doing the whole thing too. So start with 1s. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. That's 10 electrons. 3s2, 3p6. We're up to 18, we're at argon. Ding, 4s2, 3d10. Four 4p6. Four we're at 36 electrons, come back to 5s2. Uh, 4d10, 5p6, 6s2, then we hit the asterisk. I'm going to come down here. Asterisk come down, 4f14, 5d10, 6p6, so let's see, so 36, 38, 48, 54, uh, 56, 66, 70, 80, 86, 86, good. Then we have, so 86, we have 12 more electrons to go. Then 7s2. Double asterisk, double star, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see, five F, ten. And that is the complete electron configuration for Californium. And that ends this lecture.